Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Carlo Oger. I am an emergency physician and medical director for the emergency department at Cartersville Medical Center. This video is about a presentation I did for our hospitals, the internal medicine doctors who work in our hospital, in the management of nosebleeds. So this is a down to the point kind of presentation, not a lot of details, not a lot of background, just exactly what you need to know to manage a nosebleed. The first step, you know, have the patient blow their nose. Um, blowing the nose decreases the effect of local fibrinolysis and removes clots, permitting a better examination to, um, for you to do. In other words, the clots that, that's there, that the body is bleeding past it, is really no good. So if you get it out, you have a better chance of doing a good exam and to um, start from scratch, if you will. Second step, apply a vasoconstrictor like afrin or neosinephrine before the examination may reduce hemorrhage and help to pinpoint the precise bleeding site. Third step, apply pressure over the nares and have the patient lean forward. You don't want all the blood going to the back of the throat and the patient then swallowing it. This will make you nauseous, it'll start vomiting, it's just a bad thing. Have the patient do this for at least 10 minutes before attempting even to examine the patient. Many times, this is all you will need to do to stop a no nosebleed. As you can see here in this picture, this is a nasal clip. And you use that so that the patient doesn't have to hold his nose. He just used this nasal clip to stop the bleeding. If the bleeding has not stopped, then you will have to try to stop it by doing some kind of medical intervention. So, if you're lucky enough to see the bleeding blood vessel, and you can reach it easily, um, and it is not pumping blood like a fountain, then you can try cauterization. But, before you do anything, before you're going to attempt cauterization, or before you're going to try other steps to stop this nosebleed, you have to protect yourself. Tickling the nose with speculums and sticks and gauze and other objects can stimulate a sneeze or make the patient cough up, and then the blood will end up all over your face, hair, clothing and everywhere else. So make sure you use full precautions. Use a mask with a shield, use a hat, use a yellow gown. Protect yourself from exposure. If you can't see where it's bleeding from, then it's in a, usually an anterior bleeding, which is 90% of all nasal bleeds. If it's not pumping blood like a fountain, then you can try to cauterize it with simple silver nitrate sticks. This is a chemical cauterization which this silver nitrate creates a scab um, and stops the bleeding. Uh, these are the first line choice for chemical burn or cauterization of the bleeding blood vessel. The second step is actually what I use the most, is the Marisil nasal packing. This is essentially a dehydrated gauze that will expand when exposed to humidity, thus causing tamponade of the bleeding. Sniff like Pain, Do it again. Do it again. Nah, that was just fake. Do it again. There you go. <laughs> so Dr. Walsh, the, the bleeding has been primarily from the uh, primarily left, from the left nostril. What are you doing? Just applying an antibiotic ointment all around the outside of it. Make it slide in there smooth and easy? Yes, that's the plan. All right. We're going to do the left one first, okay? Okay, both. This is the most realistic one of the human. You can't feel nothing. I'm not on that. All right, lay back for me. Okay. Put more water in there. All right, you ready for the other one? Wait. Okay. All right, you ready? Emotional. Push it back. Okay. okay. I'm just going to spray the liquid in there, okay? Can you lay back for me? It didn't hurt. Lay back. Rapid Rhino. This is by far the Ferrari or the best option for no split. It combines the expanding effects of the Mersil packing with the uh, membrane type effect of helping it clot 
with the tamponading effect of an expanding balloon inside your nose. Here I'm going to play you the video that Rapid Rhino has online to train uh, physicians and practitioners on the use of Rapid Rhino. So you are agreed to educate these medicine doctors on the placement of this uh, Rhino rocket. And yes, I'm I am. going to show it here. It's already wet, and you see how jelly-like and soft it is, so it's not going to be too uncomfortable. And the point is, you do have to push it all the way to the hub. So with one forceful but gentle push, we do it. I actually pull the nostrils up, and you're going to go straight back. Don't push it up like this. You go straight back. So you aim it, oh. and here we go, man. One, two, and three. Done. Need to spit, right? Wait, did you do that fast? A good yeah. thing, because that would come out. Right. If if we don't do it fast and people fight it and so on, you can keep recording. I'm just gonna. And now I'm inflating, and I'm inflating until I get enough pressure. You can see the nose being inflated. Oh man. And that should be it. <sighs> The Rapid Rhino nasal tamponade devices are specifically designed to address the major challenges in the management of epistaxis. This device features a high volume, low pressure tamponade, ensuring gentle and even compression to control epistaxis at the source of the bleed. Water activates the carboxymethylcellulose, turning the dry fabric into a slick and cooling gel for ease of insertion. Remove the device from the envelope package along with removal of the light blue plastic tube encasing. Thoroughly saturate the Rapid Rhino nasal tamponade in sterile water by submerging the product for at least a full 30 seconds. Insert the Rapid Rhino nasal tamponade into the patient's nostril parallel to the septal floor or following along the superior aspect of the hard palate. If there seems to be some resistance upon insertion, simply remove and reinsert, ensuring the device is positioned such that it is pushed into the face level to the palate, as opposed to up the nose at a 45 degree angle. Gently insert the device until the blue indicator ring is just inside the opening of the nostril. Using a 20 cc syringe, slowly inflate the balloon with air only inside the patient's nose. The balloon will conform to the nasal anatomy. The Rapid Rhino nasal tamponade uses gentle pressure to control intranasal hemorrhage at its source, while the plant-based CMC gel creates a moist and comfortable environment. Use the pilot cuff as you would on an endotracheal tube to monitor intranasal pressure as you inflate. It should be taut but not hard. The specific amount of air to inflate will depend on the specific anatomy of each patient, so be sure to use the pilot cuff to monitor. When there is sufficient pressure, allow the patient to sit for 15 to 20 minutes prior to discharge. Swelling in the nasal anatomy will reduce, and the balloon may need to be inflated more to avoid movement of the device. After the second assessment of the pilot cuff, tape the plastic butterfly to the patient's cheek for discharge. The patient may come back 24 to 72 hours later for removal of the device, or they may see an ENT specialist for follow-up. Rapid Rhino has a unique design that will control epistaxis the first time and is more comfortable for patients upon insertion and removal than other packing options. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like it, comment, and to subscribe to my channel. Uh, we'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Mm,